Okay, so now you have an idea of the voltage gradients and the concentration gradients that uh, play against each other to maintain the resting potential of a cell. The resting potential is the electrical readiness of the neuron. So resting and potential, they have real different meanings. Resting, of course, being something that's calm and not active, but then potential, that has a, oh, what's the potential of something? There's something that's coming, there's something that's expected. So this name is really captures uh, the state of the cell. It is at rest, but it, at, in, in its at rest state, it has great potential. This great potential is actually an energy store. And what happens is this resting cell will receive input from other cells in the form of graded potentials. These graded potentials are stimulations that result in localized change in voltage. So these stimulations can have a positive or a negative effect on the cell. And I don't mean positive or negative in terms of um, is it happy or less happy. It is positive in terms of making the cell more positive in charge or less negative, or it would be negative in terms of making the cell more negative. So a hyperpolarizing effect, okay, hyperpolarizing graded potential, that makes the cell more negative, okay? A depolarizing graded potential, that makes the cell less negative. And again, the, the polar parts refers to the inside of the cell and the um, outside of the cell. So if you hyperpolarize, you further separate these two, the inside and the outside, in terms of charge. But the depolarizing, that makes, you know, that you less separate them, okay? So these graded potentials are going to give rise to an action potential, which we'll speak about in a, more shortly. This is an example of a hyperpolarizing graded potential. So what happens is the extracellular side of the cell must become more positive. The inside of the cell must become more negative, okay, with respect to the outside. So for the extracellular side to become more positive, then you have an efflux of potassium ions. So potassium ions leave the cell, okay, and that makes the outside of the cell more positive. You also have an influx of chlorine ions. Uh, chlorine ions are negative, so this influx from outside to inside makes the inside of the cell more negative with respect to the outside. So this causes hyperpolarization. Then you have depolarization. Depolarization can be produced by an influx of sodium ions and is produced by the opening of normally closed gated sodium channels. So what happens is that uh, the cell would be stimulated through a neurotransmitter and this will cause uh, sodium channels to open. And once these sodium channels open, then they will let the positive sodium into the cell, and this causes a big bump in the positivity of the cell, and it would become less negative, okay? Once this becomes, once part of the cell becomes less negative, these uh, sodium channels are voltage sensitive. So subtle changes or increases in positivity can cause more of these uh, sodium channels to open to have more sodium uh, enter the cell, making the inside of the cell more positive than the outside of the cell. And once the cell becomes sufficiently positive or less negative, then an action potential begins. So here's an example of the path, the action potential. Here's your resting, uh, your resting threshold right here at negative 70. The cell becomes more positive, and this here um, is the action potential. It propagates down the cell and then it starts to recover back to baseline to become more negative again And then in that recovery process it goes a little bit further becomes um, Hyperpolarizes and then it returns to threshold So what is an action potential an action potential is a large brief reversal in the pol polarity of an axon it lasts approximately one millisecond and it occurs once this threshold is released, okay? So it only occurs once this threshold is released. So this threshold is approximately negative 50 millivolts relative to the extracellular surround. And what happens at this negative 50 millivolts is that the sodium channels that I mentioned to you, they are, there are voltage sensitive channels.
So once the inside of the cell reaches this negative 50 millivolts, then these voltage sensitive channels, they open and Na comes flooding into the cell. The sodium comes flooding into the cell, which increases the positivity of the cell substantially. After this, then you have these potassium channels. They are also voltage sensitive and they open. And remember, potassium has more higher proximity inside the cell than outside the cell. So with this greater proximity inside the cell, then you're going to have a concentration gradient that's going to want the uh, potassium to flow outside the cell to where there's less. And the, with the sodium influx that has now um, got the cell to be positive, the outside of the cell is now negative. And so the outside of the cell is going to attract the potassium ions. So this interplay of having both the outside of the cell being more negative, which attracts the um, potassium, which is positive, and there are fewer potassium ions outside the cell than inside the cell, then you have the potassium ions that leave the cell. So in this instance, both the concentration gradients and the voltage gradients are supporting that potassium leave the cell. Okay, so this then returns with all of these positive potassium cells leaving. This is going to make the cell more negative and it's going to help with returning the cell to its resting potential. And here's a basic example of the, the voltage sensitive channels at play in an action potential. So here you have resting potential. Once this threshold is, re is uh, reached, then these sodium channels open. Okay, the sodium um, floods into the cell. Again, this is the intracellular fluid right here. And up here, this is the extracellular fluid. So these voltage, um, excuse me, the sodium floods into the cell. This makes the cell uh, positive and an action potential begins. Okay, now once the action potential has completed the cells become sufficiently positive, then what happens is the sodium channels close and the potassium channels open. Okay, then you have the inside of the cell is again more positive at this point than the outside of the cell and they have a higher concentration of potassium inside the cell. So both the voltage gradient and the concentration gradient are pulling this positive potassium outside of the cell and then to help the inside of the cell become once again more negative. And then you have this sort of overshoot period and then the cell returns to baseline. So these voltage sensitive ion channels are really important for an action potential to occur. At resting potential they are closed and ions cannot pass through. When the membrane however reaches threshold the channels open briefly enabling ions to pass through and then they close again to again restrict their flow. An action potential has an absolute refractory period and a relative refractory period. The absolute refractory period is a point at which once an actual potential has started, a new one cannot start. So this has to do with the voltage sensitive channels that they can only open during certain voltages. So if an action potential has started and the membrane has be the inside of the cells become more positive, not that you can suddenly open the sodium channels again. The sodium channels can only open at negative 50 millivolts. So once an action potential has started, right after it's finished, the, the neuron has to recover all the way back to baseline. So the ap absolute refractory period is the point from when an action potential starts to the point where the cell has recovered from sufficiently from the action potential to where it is possible for it to fire again. So during the absolute refractory period, a cell cannot, an action potential has started, so it cannot all start again, or it's recovering from an action potential and an action potential cannot then start again. The relative refractory period is a state of an axon. It's later, it's after the action potential, and the cell has already started to return back to resting potential. And at that point, it is possible to begin an action potential again with sufficient uh, stimulation.
So this here refers to the region that has an absolute refractory period. So in this absolute refractory period, an action potential is occurring and it cannot be stopped. In this absolute refractory period, the action potential has occurred and it cannot occur again because these sodium channels only open at negative 50 millivolts. Okay, so an action potential can only occur once again when it reaches this relative refractory period, at which point the, the inside of the cell is sufficiently negative to potentially trigger a, the opening of the sodium channels to begin another action potential.